Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories have made Sherlock Holmes one of the most recognizable names throughout the world. Holmes is as famous in Tokyo as he is in Timbuktu. But who on earth is he? And why is he so famous? We have interrogated actors who have played major roles in the Sherlock Holmes stories. He's quite extraordinary. He's uh, more intelligent than anyone who's ever lived. We have cross-examined historians, critics and experts who have studied the man. He is what I might like to describe as a thinking superhero. You couldn't have come at a better time! And we have taken evidence from best-selling authors who have tried to emulate Holmes. I wanted to out Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes. This is the cartridge case of the bullet which killed Mr. Hilton Cubitt. And what we have uncovered is, we hope, elementary, my dear viewer. The man who has acted Dr. Watson more than anyone else is Edward Hardwick, who played the character in the ITV serialization of the home stories. Mr. Hardwick. So it was a particular privilege to be able to meet the man himself. Oh, please sit down. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming all the way. Oh, this is very comfortable. It's very odd to be an actor interviewing another actor, and you've, you're yes. so iconically linked with this part. Does, oh, that, dear. does that annoy you in any way? That... No, it doesn't, of course. I mean, I'm, he's a great friend. He's become a great friend. Right. Um, but I suppose over 50 years as an actor, it's occupied a relatively small part of my life. And yet that's the thing that... Is, is it yes. the thing that people most... Well, I think television, I mean, you know, I mean, inevitably it does yeah. that to some extent. I mean, strictly speaking, I was far too old. <laughs> I mean, they're quite young men, actually. I mean, it's, it's a difficult uh, thing to film in a way because Watson is the narrator, so therefore yes. you're seeing everything through his eyes. Mm -hmm. And then when you switch it and become looking at two people, of one of them whom is Watson, it, it becomes a different kind of problem, I think. I retained a keen interest in criminal matters and supplemented my meagre practice by working as a police surgeon. I think Conan Doyle did a wonderful thing when he created Dr. Watson because what he actually gave himself was a way of telling the stories in two levels. We've got Watson's narration, which seems on the face of it to be a perfectly straightforward account of the crimes. It was in the early spring that I was called out early in the morning to an appointment in the West End. Of course, that's filtered through the eyes of Watson himself, and Conan Doyle writes this cleverly enough for us to see things ahead of Watson. There is also the, the, the feeling that sometimes he does the physical work. Watson! Although Holmes is a master of martial arts, it's Dr Watson who gets to biff people, isn't it? Stop or I'll shoot! And we certainly don't have Watsons nowadays in that sense at all of having some relational or unemployed pal who tags along in order to play the part of we, the rather dumb reader, and ask the questions we feel, yes, I wanted to ask that. Not a sign of a horse anyway. Watson, you have a blazing talent for observing the obvious. The reason the characters still work all these years later, and it is to do with Holmes and Watson, not just Holmes, uh, is that there is a sense of the archetype of the all-powerful, the superheroic character. Um, you know, the, the, you know, Holmes is actually a superhero in the, in the sort of Batman, Superman says he has superpowers. He is beyond ordinary men, but he's teamed with a fallible bloke. It was not until the 1980s that anyone embarked on the monumental task of televising every single one of Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories. The series starred Jeremy Brett as the great detective. The ITV series of Sherlock Holmes was a huge success, and all of the most acclaimed actors of that generation queued up to take part. John Thor, Eric Porter, Cheryl Campbell, Michael Jaston, Peter Vaughan. And there were some actors who started a distinguished career in Sherlock Holmes. Like Jude Law. Robert Hardy secured the plum role of the villain in a feature length special called The Master Blackmailer. 
one of the things that I remember latching on to in the Master Blackmailer was that he was, he had sort of ideas above his day. He was a terrible snob, a really odious snob. And um, I think, what I did, did I drop my G's or something like that? And yet here I find you, Mr. Holmes, a man of sense, boggling at terms, when the whole future and honor of your client is at stake. You surprise me, you do, really. The death of the master blackmailer at the end is by the old countess. <laughs> it's a setup which Holmes knows all about. Does he stop her? No. This goes back to what we were talking about earlier. He's, he's his own lawyer, his own judge. For a whole generation, Sherlock Holmes simply is Jeremy Brett. I don't know what it was about Jeremy Brett, but I fell in love with him immediately and unconditionally and have never reviewed it. For me, Jeremy Brett was Sherlock Holmes. When I go back and reread a story, I now picture Jeremy Brett. I'm going to agree with everybody else. It has to be Jeremy Brett. What he gets superbly well is, is the sheer weirdness and oddness of, of Holmes, that Holmes in the stories is a person very, very different and eccentric and strange and neurotic. And Brett captures that far better than any other actor that I've ever seen. Now, gentlemen, if you would give me your undivided attention. You know, he almost seems a kind of vampiric figure sometimes. He's so cadaverous and he's so white. Um, and, you know, he has that slick back hair. You are right, old man. A witness to Jeremy Brett's extraordinary technique was the man who played Dr Watson alongside him for so long. I always think Jeremy, for example, brought quite a few things to Sherlock Holmes that maybe Conan Doyle hadn't even thought of. He was able to bring a touch of Edwardian acting yes. onto the small screen, which was right for the character, but mm -hmm. an extraordinary feat to do, because he would do the most extraordinary... You know, the director would give him a note and he'd do some extraordinary gesture and you think, can't get away with it, and it would work. <laughs> I think what made him very particular as Holmes was a quality that he had anyway in himself, which was a very androgynous quality. It was not quite fish or fowl or whatever, but it was also very sexy. Jeremy Brett was so very, very special as Sherlock Holmes. A very special human being, I think. So it was a beautiful marriage between who the man was, his acting skills, and this particular product. I think one of the reasons that Jeremy was so absolutely wonderful as Holmes was because, rather like Holmes's author, he became obsessed with it. Watson, what is the medical term for obsession? I really felt he was Sherlock Holmes. I went to see him after he'd been in his two-man show as Sherlock Holmes in his dressing room, and I think he was opening a champagne bottle with a sword stick. He was still Sherlock Holmes. It was extraordinary. The role of Sherlock Holmes does take people over. I've talked to people who worked at the Midland Hotel, where he lived while he was making the Sherlock Holmes series. And they said, well, they used to kind of dread serving him, really, because they just get stuck with Sherlock Holmes for the evening and not be able to escape. Tragically, Jeremy Brett died before all the stories could be dramatised. He's now part of the Holmesian legend. And the legend lives on, often in strange and unpredictable ways. <laughs>